Well, hey YouTube, it's Elvis Ammo here. Hey, today we're gonna load up and test over the chronograph through the ballistic gel on a target. We're gonna test the uh, 180 grain Rainier wedge hollow points. Now, uh, Johnny's Reloading Bench uh, sent these over for me um, whenever he sent me the PID temperature controller for my lead melting pot. Now, I will do a video on that um, as soon as uh, I get to casting. Thank you, Johnny's Reloading Bench, for sending me that PID controller. It looked like a real professional job that you done. I'll be doing a video and uh and kind of showing my take on how things work with that um anyway um along with that he had sent me some 180 grain rainier wedge bullets and um i know that uh that those guys over there um you know had been talking about these bullets and uh he didn't send me any kind of note or anything with the package, so I'm not sure what he wanted to do, wanted, what he wanted me to do with these, but I decided that um, I would just go ahead and kind of put them through a, just a, an all-out test because it's unusual to have a subsonic bullet, you know, this, uh, this size um, from, uh, you know, that's a, a, a hollow point. This is a, a hollow point bullet, 180 grains, and uh, a lot of folks talk about these. This was featured in the 2016 SHOT Show, and uh, Rainier featured this bullet because it's a plated bullet. And it's unusual to have a 30 caliber bullet that's plated, for one thing. But they were able um, to make them this shape and plated um, and do it cheaply so they wanted to offer um, us folks that want to shoot our 300 blackouts for one thing subsonic um, we don't need a high precision bullet to shoot at subsonic velocities and I think that they had they were on to something there and that was a great idea so that's why I kind of wanted to feature this bullet myself and uh, and just kind of say thanks for people thinking outside the box like Rainier. Now you can buy these bullets for 11 or 12 cents a piece and that's the big appeal for me personally. As a caster, you know, I kind of balk at the idea to pay much more than that for sure, you know, for ammo. Um, but it looks like a well done bullet and uh, it's, it's the Rainier Wedge, and it's plated, and, uh, and it's hollow pointed. So, a lot of folks on my channel talk about all the time, won't you drill a hole and, and, uh, and make a hollow point in that subsonic bullet, that big old 230 grain missile that I shoot, and, uh, and so I know that there's interest in there and um, so I decided I would go ahead and uh, I'm going to load these with uh, 41 IMR 4198 and I'm going to load them with 11 grains of the IMR 4198 and I'm going to load them at an overall length of 2.075 there's not a lot of load data on this stuff like this. You know, Rainier tells you to use, you know, you know, standard load data. It's kind of vague, you know, because they don't have their own load data for the bullet. Um, so, um, but it was easy to come up with. And another thing is people talk about the function of this bullet. So we'll see if it functions as well um, while we're at it. Uh, so, um, I know, you know, other than the overall length, which is just, uh, you know, I just tested, 
you know, the bullet in my chamber to find out when it's going to touch the lands and grooves. And then I backed it out like 50 thousandths of an inch, you know, to allow myself plenty of clearance for the oddity of this hollow point. Um, they're not, you know, the when you when you test the length of the bullet, when you measure the length of the bullet, sometimes it's kind of off by 20 thousandths of an inch or something just because of the oddity of these little ribs up here. But um, no big deal. So I just allowed for that, and I allowed for 50 thousandths off my lands and grooves. Um, that's what that's how I did it, um, and that's how it worked out in my rifle. So you're going to have to test your own. Um, and uh, they also actually have a little concave in the back of this plated bullet. So anyway, um, I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with uh, with with all of the uh, all of the loading detail but I will certainly will certainly go through one of them here and uh, we'll put 11 grains in there there's 11 grains and uh, I can certainly load the rest of these off camera but um, oh, an another significant thing that I done um, first thing I done when I got these bullets is they look awfully large to me in diameter so I'm like I'm gonna measure them see what's going on and this is this is what they come up with it's point three one zero, so I thought that was uh, I thought that was rather large, even for a plated bullet that we normally use. What we're told to use, um, you know, cast lead low data, you know, for plated bullets. But I thought that was rather large, so the first thing that I done was I just went ahead and sized the ones that I that I'm trying out. Um, and I just I just go ahead and run them right through the sizer 309 because uh, to me that's a little large for a uh, a chamber that really wants that uh, 308 309 diameter. That's what uh, or in my in my rifle, you know that's uh, that's what it wants. So so there's uh, there's our powder. There's our bullet. That's how I like to do it. Um, you might decide something else. So we're gonna load it. We're gonna um, we're gonna seat this bullet to uh, two point zero seven five. I'm probably going to have to, I kind of back that out. I got a little ways to go, about 25 or so. About four to go. That's it. Alright, seven one. I'll take that. So, uh, um, Rainier, um, when they, they give you, you know, some detail on how to load bullets like this, they're, they're plated bullets, or this bullet in particular, I guess, um, they say that, uh, that it should have a slight taper crimp on it, um, you know, which is fine, because it don't have a cantilever for one thing, and that might have something to do with it, but, so you just want to get it good and snug. And that's it. it. You know, you can just see a good kiss on it, and uh, and I'll uh, I'll load the rest of these off camera. But um, so we're going to shoot these. We're going to shoot these over the chronograph. See if we can get them subsonic, and uh, and then we're going to shoot it 
into the ballistic gel um, because I mean for one I know that you guys are interested in this hollow point you know bullet so let's just see what the hollow point might do and then we're going to shoot it into some targets see if we can see if it's a, a fairly accurate bullet and we're going to test our function we're just going to make some stuff happen you know how it goes we start this project out there shooting and have to change some things up <laughs> as we go but uh, you'll be right there with me and uh, let's get out there and uh, and shoot some of these rascals all right 180 grain Rainier wedge Better turn that on. One thousand thirty. All right, let's see if we can land one inside the ballistic gel. 180 grain Rainier Wedge. Maybe we'll catch one of these rascals. They won't be so elusive like the like those 230 grain cash lead missiles we shoot. Try it out. Right through it. I'll be dang it. And I only got one block. I've seen it go in the woods out there. Alright. So they're not cruising fast enough to uh, do any good for us. Alright, take two. This time I put a uh, I put a book and four pieces of wood behind it. Let's see if we can catch the bullet, but that thing is just screaming through and not expanding, so it's not doing what we want. right through and ended up in the first board. There it is. Right through, just sticking into the first board there. kicks and giggles I'm gonna go ahead and put in one of our 230 grain 
missiles. All right. I'm just going to set them right on top. And uh, we'll see what it looks like compared to the hollow point. Look at that wound channel, baby. There's no mistaking what that looks like. We have it inside the book. It was uh, three quarters of the way through, and it looks like this. I think I'll take my chances with this one for self-defense, for sure. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. All right, we're gonna hit the paper right there first, and then we're gonna hit a couple of other targets. Good function, locked back, we're in good shape. Alright, so we're going to go down in flames. We're not going to let that uh, non-expanding wedge bullet dupe us. So what I've done is I went ahead and made up uh, what I think is a max charge, or close to it, of 14 and a half grains. And uh, we're going to shoot it over to Crony, see how fast it's going. And then we're going to shoot it into the ballistic gel, see if we can't make that hollow point expand like we want it. Fifteen oh four. Alright, that's what uh, Rainier says that they think the max should be for that bullet. So we were dead on. Alright. Let's see if we can make that thing expand at 1500 feet per second.
right through into the wood. Right through it. There it is. It dented up that wood pretty good. All right, well, we did what we could. All right. <laughs> I mean, that was, uh, that was super interesting, honestly. I mean, I didn't expect any of this. I really didn't. I didn't expect any of these results. Um, first of all, we'll take a look. Um, there's the uh, there's the paper. My first shot was was right there, and uh, and then uh, I put the next two right there, uh, touching each other. Broke the paper right there in between. So I mean they're accurate. I just dropped the first one. That's all. No no big deal. Um, hit right where uh, uh, hit right where I was aiming. I mean, I pretty much. And uh, so there's the paper, and you can see you can see the ribs of the uh, of the front of this bullet on the paper right there. Nice, pretty round holes. So it's shooting shooting true. Um, and then. Uh, uh, the, uh, the the over the chronograph we got exactly what we were looking for. Um, what was it? Uh, Thousand thirty feet per second. Um, so that's consistent with uh, with my testing. Um, I was averaging uh, thousand thirty eight feet per second. Um, and uh, and then uh, the the ballistic gel <laughs> these uh these hollow points you know just wasn't moving fast enough or that's what i thought you know to go to to expand at all in the ballistic gel at a thousand thirty just wasn't going to happen um and uh and then in the end i was like there's no way you know this is a hollow point we're going to make it expand because that's what you guys want me to do make that thing expand and I brought it up to what Ray and Ear says that this bullet you know it, they they say you know to not shoot it over 1500 feet per second is basically kind of the the thing you know for whatever reason um, there is you know but in my opinion you know I felt like I was maxed out on powder and that's why I, uh, I put it in at 1450 uh, 14 and a half grains of IMR 4198. I wanted to go ahead and just see what I can do for it. See what I can do to the, the ballistic gel. See if I can make the bullet expand or explode. And even at 1500 feet per second, it just didn't happen. Um, just didn't get it. Um, but on the other hand, as we have seen in, in several videos, when I shot the the 230 grain missile, that thing does a flip in the ballistic gel and creates a massive wound channel every single time. If I had to choose for self-defense over this hollow point, I would certainly pick the cast lead 230 grain missile, hands down. Um, so let's let's take a look at that. This is the ballistic gel. Those those straight lines that you see are the hollow point bullet passing straight through it. And 
you see that thing that looks like a brim fish right there that is a massive that is a massive wound right there that's not a temporary wound that's a rip where the bullet flipped around and um and then this uh this passing on this side i just flipped it around was the uh, 1500 feet per second this this line here and it had a little bit of expansion it looked like in the very beginning right there it looked like something more than the other two that we shot we lost the first one went straight through and then as it moved through it just kind of looked like the other ones but uh, that wound channel right there you seen it really good on camera I know you did um, is just beautiful so that's uh, that's the ballistic gel and, uh, and and that and that wound cavity don't lie it, it's been consistent every time I shoot that bullet well, this was the, uh, the the first hollow point passed straight through it. I seen it go in the woods. I knew it didn't make it. I knew it didn't land in there. And then the second one, I put the wood up and a, a book behind it. And um, and this is the bullet. You can see the 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 rifling on it. And uh, this is where it hit. Um, went straight through the book into the wood and it was lodged in there not too bad because I was able to pull it out with my fingers and it and it just created all of that hitting the wood and the book um, and the uh, the second one um, well we'll look at uh, yeah we'll go ahead this was the uh, this was the the last one that I shot the hollow point yeah, you know, 1500 feet per second. It didn't do much through the ballistic gel, as you just seen, and um, and then it went into the book and really deep into the wood. You know, almost even here, almost, you know, that deep. You know, the width of the bullet. But I was still able to pull it out, wedge it out with my fingers. Um, but all the damage was caused by. You know the book and the wood um, but didn't do anything in 16 inches of ballistic gelatin and then um, this right here <laughs> this was our uh, look at this this was our bullet right here this was I don't I just thought uh, see these things are just kind of off the top of my head sometimes as we're shooting but you know I didn't really even expect to shoot this one today um, but I, I knew I had to throw it in there and you can see uh, you know you can see somewhat of the rifling still left on it there where it all bent up and uh, but see this thing is twisted deformed I mean it is messed up and then it spun around in the ballistic gelatin and you know it hit inside the book backwards just as all of them do they come out backwards um, that's what this bullet does it wreaks havoc man it comes it's flipping through as long and big as this bullet is and heavy it does major damage um, I'm always impressed every time I see it in the ballistic gelatin um, so so uh, so that was that and uh, you know you um, I, I probably shot um, I shot you know maybe 15 rounds uh, so far and all of them have functioned and I've had up to uh, I think 11 or 12 um, at a time in the magazine something like that um, and they all functioned you know really well no problems I mean it was just nothing to talk about it all functioned just fine so uh, I mean what a uh, what a what a great test um, you know, but these things, you know, these uh, these hollow points, you know, are going to need, you know, a little help, more striations in here or 
you know, cuts in this, you know, I don't know how soft the lead is under the plating and that kind of thing, but, um, but it's definitely going to need some, some help, you know, in order for these to expand, you know, I mean, at 1500 feet per second, if these don't expand, I just don't expect nothing to happen. In my opinion, you know, whenever it went into the ballistic gelatin, it looked like, you know, the tip kind of flowered up maybe, you know, to maybe the width of the bullet, to, to the width of the bullet, and that's about it, because you've seen a little bit better wound channel starting out. I think the tip kind of flowered just, just barely, but it just didn't expand or open. So, uh... I mean, <laughs> that that was I just I, I tried to make it happen. I tried to make that bullet explode at 1,500 feet per second. That's a maxed out charge. The powder it was, I could just barely feel the, a tiny bit of a crunch when I when I seated the bullet, or he, heard just a little bit, just barely, just enough for it to touch the powder is all it did, um, in that in that maxed out charge. Um. Well, I mean, there's the results. <laughs> I am, uh, I am excited that uh, that Rainier, um, or uh, I'd be excited for any company to uh, to make a, a plated bullet, 30 caliber, that we can shoot in our subsonics. That would just be wonderful. Uh, I I appreciate Rainier for doing that, and I just wanted to showcase this bullet for that reason. And uh, Johnny's Reloading Bench, I appreciate you sending me those bullets. Um, so, hopefully, you know, all the guys that keep talking about, you know, the function, you know, this bullet, you know, because of the shape of the bullet, it functions or it don't function well or whatever. I've, I've not had any problem with it. And, um, and I, was, I was getting full function of my rifle. It, uh, it locked back on the last round. It... You know, run every round um, in between. I don't know what to say, but uh, anywho, YouTube, I will see you in the next video.